What's the deal, YouTube? It's your boy Tank Be Chopping, and I'm coming at y'all with another haircut tutorial. All right, so what we finna do on this cut is we're gonna give this man like a, a messy type, crop top type look on top. So we're gonna take the top down slightly with some sheer work, and then we're gonna give him a low fade on the sides, line up the beard, add some enhancements. You know, we're just gonna give this man the whole nine, make him look nice, so when he gets out of this chair, he just feels like a million bucks. So first thing is first guys, uh, I'm saturating the top of the hair so I can go ahead and cut the top down. Now a lot of times people ask me, do I do the top first or do I do it at the end of the cut? And really my answer to that is it just depends. So since he hasn't had a haircut in a while and we're taking off a good amount from the top, I am, you know, I decided to go ahead and do that first. And that's what I normally do when, when they haven't had a haircut for, the, for a while or if they're gonna take a good amount off, I tend to do that first. So as you can see, I'm starting in this middle of the head and I'm just moving my way forward, creating my first guideline. And I'm taking about half an inch off. And once that is through all the way to the front of his head, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that same, you know, that same guideline that I just set. And I'm gonna use that to cut the, the rest of the top of his hair. So what I did there is I just made my my guideline a little thicker just so I can really see, you know, my initial cuts and I can see exactly how much I'm taking off. Now I'm coming the opposite way and just making sure all that hair on top is nice and even. All right, guys, so so remember, guys, I did say he was getting like a messy look on top, you know, so, kind of like a crop top. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing some slice cutting. And what this is going to do right here is this is actually going to add some texture to his hair so it, just, it doesn't just lay, you know, so flat on his head, just so, it, you know, it, it comes up in certain parts when we decide to give it that messy look. Basically, it just, it just looks nice uh, once we put some type of product in it, whether it's powder or clay or gel or whatever, you know, adding this texture, you know, doing this method to add texture just gives it a good look. Now what I'm doing is, uh, you may think I'm cutting the top down some more, but what I'm actually doing is I have some texturizing shears in my hand and this is the equivalent to point cutting. So uh, I'm really not that good at point cutting. So I have these shears and these shears basically help me just uh, basically point cut without ha having to actually do the actual method. Now I'm just blow drying the top, just uh, getting it nice and dry just so I can go ahead and see how it looks and see if I need to take some more off or basically just to see how it's gonna look when I'm done with the finished product. All right, so now that that is done, we actually gonna start some of our fade work. I got my number four guard on my Ergos from Gamma. And what I'm doing here is I'm basically just gliding that clipper up, uh, taking off all that hair from the sides. Basically, I'm just debulking this hair and just trying to make sure I connect the sides to the top of this haircut. So as you can see, I'm just gliding the clipper up and away uh, right off of that parietal ridge. And in the back, we are dropping it slightly since we are doing a, a low drop fade. So I do want to drop it in the back also just to make sure we keep that shape. So now I got my number three guard on my clipper and uh, I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm basically just coming up right below what I just did and basically just debulking the sides a little more. So basically I'm bringing it down to a three. So when I do actually fade this hair up from the, uh, from the zero on the side, I don't have to fade all the way to the long hair on top. I'm just fading. Basically I'm just fading up into a three. So now I got my Gamma Evos. I'm setting my first initial bald guideline. 
And since we are doing a low fade, uh, I like to keep my C cups a little darker. So as you can see, uh, I didn't come up so high on the front of that C cup, left that part a little darker. And I'm coming up right over the ear and I'm gonna drop the, the bald guideline uh, right below the occipital bone in the back of the head. And then I'm just gonna follow that same shape throughout this haircut. And you may see me going over it a couple times. Basically, I'm just trying to make sure this, this line is nice and crisp. Uh, it doesn't have to be like perfectly, perfectly straight. Uh, I know a lot of people, they tend to, uh, they just, you know, they put that out there that you need to make it nice and straight. Now you do want it, you know, you do want it pretty straight, but it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. Cause like I've said before, guys, we're gonna fade this line now anyways. So I don't think it needs to be 100% perfect. It can be a little, you know, a little, a little shaky. It doesn't have to be like the straightest line ever. Now we following that with the shaver. I have my uh, my foil, my double foil FX from Babylon, and as you can see, I'm just coming up right below what I just did. And the closer I get to that line, I'm actually flicking out and I'm relieving some of that pressure so I don't create a harsh line. So now with the ergos in my hand, I got my lever all the way open and I'm creating my next guideline. So we're coming up about half an inch to three quarters of an inch. Uh, most of the time I make my guidelines a little bigger. Uh, I like to stretch my fades out. Some, you, you, you know, you don't, you don't have to, if that's not your style, that's cool. You can do it about half an inch and that'd be fine also. But like I said, for me, I like to do it about three quarters of an inch cause I like my, I like my fades to look a little more stretched. So I did that about three quarters of an inch. Now I close my lever halfway and I'm coming up halfway from that section and I'm just flicking out and now I'm closing my lever. So right now I came down one more notch coming up right below what I just did. And then I'm gonna close my lever all the way and try to flick out that bottom line. And I am gonna do some slight detail work in between uh, in this area, just because I'm a little anal when it comes to doing this first uh, this first guideline. I want to make sure I get this basically as nice as I can get before I move on to my next step. So as you can see, I'm going over it quite a bit, and I'm adjusting that lever as needed to get rid of the dark spots that I already see. So now I'm moving up to my number one guard. My lever is open and I'm creating my next guideline. And I'm coming up about the same amount. So uh, I'm coming up about another three quarters of an inch and I'm still following that same shape. Remember guys, you wanna keep a comb or a brush in your hand. That way you can brush or comb away all that excess hair. Or in this case, I'm using a comb also because he does have some weight and I'm trying to make sure I comb the hair down so I can actually see how that guideline looks. And y'all know I like to fade downward, so I started with my lever open, and then I closed my lever about halfway, came up right below that, and then I closed my lever all the way, and I'm just attacking the bottom of that of that section, just trying to make sure you know this uh, this section comes together nicely. So my next step is taking my one and a half guard, lever is all the way open, and I'm creating my next section. Uh, same thing, guys. I'm coming about half an inch to three quarters of an inch using a slight flick out motion. And then I'm gonna close my lever and come right below that. So now I'm just uh, attacking this with a three. You know, I did do this earlier in the haircut, but I'm just doing it again. Basically just cross checking my work, making sure I get all this hair down to that desired length. And basically what I'm gonna start doing now is I'm gonna fade down. So after I use this three, I am gonna jump down to my number two guard. So here is my two guard. My lever is all the way open, using a flick out motion, attacking where we see them dark areas. And then I'm gonna close that lever and I'm just gonna basically just go over what I did coming up right below what I just did.
So now that our initial steps are done, uh, I am moving on to some detail work. So even though this fade isn't 100% perfect, uh, I did go through all my initial steps. And now this is where you take that fade to the next level. As you can see, I put my number one guard back on there and I'm cleaning up some of these dark areas and these dark spots that I see. Basically, that wasn't taken out 100%. And that happens sometimes, guys. Uh, sometimes you can go through all your steps and the fade just isn't perfect and you're gonna have to go back in detail. So here's my number, uh, my 116 guard. So as y'all can see, I didn't use my 116 guard in my first initial steps. I used my 116 guard to detail. So that's what I'm doing now. So I've seen some dark areas and uh, a faint line. So I decided to attack that. I decided to attack that on my 116 and I started with the lever halfway open and I'm just adjusting it open and close. Basically just adjusting that lever uh, as needed to where I feel it's gonna help get them lines and them dark spots out. Now this is just my lever open. There's no guard on my clipper right now. And as you can see, I'm, you know, my, cl my clipper is actually tilted on its edge slightly. You know, I'm, I'm basically just using the corner of the blade. And uh, this is that, that technique that I do all the time with all my haircuts. I talk about it in all my videos. It's, it's basically, it's corner blending, guys. So when you corner blend, it doesn't cut the hair down as short as it would when you hold the clipper flat. So I tend to do that a lot. Just basically, just to detail and to make this Basically, take this fade to the next level. All right, so now I'm moving on to his front lineup. And as you can see, I started in the middle and I'm just basically just working my way over to the side that I just cut. Uh, you don't have to do this part uh this part now guys uh some people wait to the very end to edge you know edge their clients up me i just like to do it now since this side of the fade is already done or maybe not 100 percent done but since it's almost all the way done i decide to line them up so i can actually see if this fade needs some more work and a lot of people will be like man that really doesn't make sense but if you've been cutting hair for a while or if you do this in the same steps that i do you notice that when you decide to put that line up in there, you can actually see some more malfunctions or some discrepancies or just some dark areas that you need to attack and detail a little more to take that haircut to the next level. And y'all know guys, I'm all about detailing and taking my haircuts to the next level. I try to give my clients the best haircut that I can possibly give them. So now we're fading in that beard. I started off with the lever open. And I just close it slightly towards the top of that beard. Now here's my number one guard lever open and lever closed. And I'm basically doing the same steps that I did on the haircut. And now I'm just doing some more slight detail work just to clean up that fade a little bit. So now we're uh, moving on to the opposite side of his haircut. Uh, we're doing the exact same thing. So we're starting off with our lever open. We're coming up about three quarters of an inch following that same shape that we created with the trimmers and we're uh, fading downward and trying to take that bottom line out. And remember guys, if this doesn't take the bottom line out, you can always come back later on in the cut with your trimmers and just flick at that bottom line to get that bottom line out. So since you already heard me talk about this on the opposite side, I'm going uh, I'm going to be quiet for a while and just let y'all watch what's going on and you might hear me chime in every now and then just to just to say a couple words here and there about what what's going on and what I'm doing. So as y'all can see guys, I feel like this side of his haircut is just coming together a lot easier and a lot quicker than the other side did. Now obviously I know I sped it up, right? But you know, sometimes uh, everybody's, you know, like some some people's 
hair it grows different on one side than it does on the on the other so sometimes one side's gonna be easier than the other and that's basically how this is you know his right side was easier for me to fade in than his left side uh, now i do want to state that he does wear safety glasses a lot uh, my client here he actually works in the plants so uh, he has a tan line you know right above his ear and he has it on the other side also but if you notice you know you'll see me just attacking that spot a lot and uh, i always ask him you know every time he comes in when i'm cutting his hair when i see that there and i'm sitting there messing with it trying to detail and make it look good i always say hey you wear safety glasses right and he goes yeah and i know i ask him all the time and he always tells me yeah and i'm surprised he's not tired of me asking him yet right but basically it's just you know it's it's i see something there that i'm trying to make sure it looks perfect and for some reason i can't get it right and i'm trying to figure out why but it's because he has basically a tan line on his head so i, I sit there and i try to make i give the illusion that it's perfectly faded in guys and that's, and that's what you want to do you want to try to make sure these haircuts look as good as they can so sometimes you're gonna have to detail a little more than others especially if they have tan lines you want to make sure that fade just looks nice and crisp and you want to make sure it pops so here I am doing some more detail work. I did do some slight edge up work uh, a few minutes ago. I know y'all just seen that, but now I'm just, you know, just detailing it, trying to take this fade to the next level. So now as y'all can see, I'm taking down his mustache, fading in his beard. All right, guys, so I didn't record the back, uh, but basically I just did the same steps. I connected the left side to the right side. But uh, I am going over everything I did with them trimmers. I'm going over it with the razor just to make sure all his lines pop, make sure his beard looks good, the mustache looks on point. Just to make sure this edge up is just looking right. So he did have some new growth on this side. So I did, you know, I didn't want to push his uh, beard too far down. So I just cleaned it up a little bit. And since we are going to add some enhancements, it's going to help darken that area just a little bit. So now I'm using them enhancements. I got my airbrush. I got that no drip by 245. I got my enhancement card and I'm just going over everything. And I'm just going over that edge up, making sure these lines pop. Uh, darkening up his beard slightly just just because like I said guys he had a little bit of new growth and I was trying to make sure that looked nice and just make sure it looked on point so now I'm adding some texture powder by smooth hair care so we're just adding it in, you know, giving them that messy look on top. And what this does is it's kind of like hair gel, except it gives a dry look and it's a matte finish. So it doesn't leave any uh, wet look on top. And, you know, a lot of people are going for that matte finish now, guys. So that's what I'm using on the top of his hair. All right. So this is the before look. Dude needed a haircut. It's been about a month since his previous haircut. And this is the finished product. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this haircut down in the comments, guys. If y'all think I did this man right, y'all let me know. If y'all think I messed him up, let me know. Also, make sure to smash that like button. If you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe one time for your boy. But yeah, guys, I think I hooked this man up. Y'all let me know what y'all think, guys. Uh, that's basically it for this video. I appreciate y'all YouTube. Until next time.